Good evening, welcome to the World of Art with Paul Creamy. Today we're going to do something different and uh, I haven't done for a few years. At one time I did two years of just painting clouds like this. And I found it to be very spiritual and very... In I love the idea of the clouds and the way they moved and everything, the colors. So I decided that I would do a little series, or this series, of clouds for this particular show. So I've got the brushes all set, I've got the paint all set. So we're going to start and see what happens, get it going. And it may take very little time to bring it to life. I love painting clouds. Like I said, I spent a couple of years and everybody says, what a waste of time. You're not going to make any money. I sold every painting I did. I had friends that just couldn't stop buying the clouds. I do want to get my uh, blower and dry the paint. I might have to stop for a second and get up and get it at a certain time, but so when you do clouds and you paint it, you spread the paint around a little just to see how it feels gives you a idea of where you want to go. You look at the photograph, you look at the sky, and you say, oh my God, it's so easy. And I'm very, very um, detailed when it comes to doing stuff like this. Something about it that really pulls me into it. So I go over and over and over until I get exactly where I want to get. And all of a sudden, it's there. I mean, I've painted these kind of clouds outside in the public. I had all these people standing around watching me and they're saying, how do you get the clouds to be so detailed? And I said, it's just moving the brush around. And one of these cloud brushes makes a big difference too. Oh. It plugs in over there behind me where you got it, and then come around. So you just keep putting color onto the canvas and moving it around. And Be patient with yourself. Don't be in a hurry. The movement, the feeling, it all takes place inside the camera, inside the picture. It's like you take photographs of these beautiful clouds and you say to yourself, oh my God, how am I going to do these? And all of a sudden, you can do them. I think everybody should just spend months painting nothing but clouds. And then when you do a painting of a beach and the clouds are coming out so beautiful, then you say to yourself, wow, I'm glad I did that. In have a variation in the colors with the clouds. You can change it as you go along by simply putting a, a white color on top of it. The base color sort of disappears and the clouds sort of jump out at you. <sighs> I 
I've been working at Home Depot in Rockland and I do a lot of lifting and my arms get worn out, I think, by this time of the day. I said, oh God. That's when you know you're getting there, getting there in that age where you have to think more of yourself than you used to think of. The time in my life where I would not consider ever stopping running, playing tennis, uh, all of those things, they're things of the past. God love us. We lived a, a very fruitful, happy childhood. I think we're still children. The older we get, the more we become more like children. It's wild. Yeah, thank you. So what I've done is I've covered the canvas with color. Now I'm going to move the color around and I'm gonna slide over a little and take different looks at different particular colors. And then I'm gonna dry the colors that are on here now with the blower so it helps make this move a little faster. And, and then as I do that, the painting, the paints, sort of dry up a little and lose some of the water and stuff. I got the gun right behind me and pulling it over here. I have a friend of mine that once said to me that I'm cheating by using the blower. I says, I don't care what you think. I use the blower because I like the paint to dry faster than it does. That's the problem with oil paints. Oil paints take a year to dry, months and months to dry. And so I've got to learn how to live with the idea that it's going to dry. So when I'm going to do oil paintings, I'm going to do more than one painting at a time so that I don't get lost. You know, being an artist, being a person, we always have to adjust. We're constantly adjusting. Everything in our lives we adjust to. We just adjusted to a year and a half of pain in the ass. Excuse my Irish. A pain. And we didn't need it, we didn't want it, but we wound up with it. I think the government had a lot to do with it personally, but I'm not gonna get caught up in any of that stuff. We went through it, we're over with it, I hope we never get it again. And I recommend when you start, try to keep the layers of paint very thin, especially the first three or four, because it'll build up. And then the more it builds up, the more it changes the uh, feeling of what you're doing. So keep that in mind. I say maybe the first 10 paintings don't try to make a painting perfect. Just try to figure out what you can do and what you can't do. So we see we got some of this down. Now we're gonna do some painting again. See if I can get something softer, easier. Uh, maybe this, thank you. Yeah, that friend of mine that gave me the oil paints, he gave me a ton of brushes. Oh my God, you can't imagine the stuff. Oh. Like a kid, felt like Christmas came to, in the month of September. And so the lady that 
actually gave it to me because he's in a nursing home. Uh, I was so impressed with her that I did something special for her. I do these crucifixions of shattered mirror glass on wooden crosses. And uh, when somebody does something nice like that for me, I make sure that I do something nice for them. I've been like that ever since I was a little kid, I swear. My teachers probably have more of my art than I do. I know stuff disappeared at grammar school, disappeared in junior high, disappeared in high school, even disappeared into museum school. I mean, people just help themselves to stuff. And the last couple of uh, buildings I've been in disappeared. You know, it's just, I don't know. I think it just like, I think Van Gogh and Picasso, well, not Van Gogh as much as Picasso, people didn't like Van Gogh stuff. <laughs> they didn't steal any of his things. But they stole a lot of Picassos. So I put these layers on so that the cloud has some kind of a texture. So I keep drying it as I dry, as I go along. So you touch the brush in the white. Shaking it back and forth very gently. And because you've dried the layers underneath, the painting underneath starts to have more power. I'm putting the darker blue on the bottom again so that I have some personality, a little color in the bottom of the sky here. Then I want it real dark on the bottom. darker at the top. And 
As you go along, the painting gets stronger and stronger and stronger. See, the, the painting is built on layers. And the layers have a personality all their own, and it just gets stronger and stronger. I know you're sitting out there saying, oh, you've done so many of these, you can do them in your sleep. It's true. It is. I've done so many, I could do them in my sleep. It become a dream. Art is a dream anyways. Everything we do comes from a part of us that has some kind of a mechanism that puts this stuff together and says, wow, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And we do it. And don't be afraid to just slap it on because, I mean, that's what gets it to have that really beautiful color in it. Layers on layers and layers, building it up, pushing it around a little. The I think painting is something that everybody should do just to express themselves, to find out, you know, what makes them tick, you know, get that inner person out of yourself, find out what it's really like, and all of a sudden you've got this beautiful, quiet, soft sky. I think it's the end of the day and it's the end of the whole bit. Nice. I really like it. I think it's almost done. Let me just dry it a little.
You know, I don't copy a photograph. I use a photograph to direct me and get me going, but I don't make it work so that it's just like the photograph. I, I have its issue in it, but not copying it to a point that it's almost like a photograph. So I'm sweeping it across the bottom in, the, in certain areas so that it has movement. Don't want it to be just a stop, stuck in a spot so it's flowing across. Let me, let me put this up and show you uh, if I can hold it up. Does that work? I think it has a really quiet, after the storm feeling. If I had my, um, I used to wear, not wear, I had a glass that you looked at and it pushed it painting back. And it, I had it for years and years and years, and then I finally said I'm going to stop using it, and I gave it to another artist friend of mine, and it just pushed the canvas so far back that you could see all of the mistakes, if there are any mistakes. And there are mistakes in all paintings. Uh, everything we think is perfect every time, but there, there are mistakes. There's things that you can change or touch up or move. Just 
get the painting where you want it to be. You know, that's that saying, I'm in charge, not the brush, not the people, me. I'm the painter. And what happens to most people is they have an artist that teaches them how to paint. They get caught up in what he does and they want to do the same thing he does. I had a friend of mine in, in Rockland that taught people how to paint and they did a great job. They copied his paintings perfect. And I just felt like if they've copied his paintings, what about their paintings? I don't try to do that with my students, and I haven't had a lot of students, but at one time I had 17 teenage girls from Hanover and Hingham and a couple of places like that, that the girls wanted to go to art school, and I helped them in, for two years, and they all got into art school, all of them. And they were thrilled, the parents were thrilled. And the father was thrilled. And he, came and told me, I looked at my daughter's, I probably talked about this before, my daughter's portfolio of four years of school in an art school in Florida, I don't want to mention the name, and two years with your portfolio, and your portfolio jumped off the canvas, off the site. It just made such a difference. So what, what I'm doing right now is I'm just putting a little touch to the top of the canvas on the paint and moving it around so that it doesn't look like it's the ocean. I think it's got a nice feeling. I'm pretty happy with it. It didn't take that long. It was kind of, like I said. And it, this is the kind of a painting a couple of days from now you can go to and pick up a brush and go over and touch certain areas until you get it exactly like you'd want it to be. So I don't do just clouds anymore. I'll put clouds in my paintings when I'm doing them, but I like to uh, do the whole thing, the ocean and the, 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 all of it. But because I love clouds so much that the paintings that I do now, they have that feeling. Getting, keep getting paint on my fingers today. Oh. All right, I think it's done. And if you don't want to spend the money on canvas, get quality five, paper books that are really nice paper that will take a beating and paint on the paper for a few packages of paper and uh, you'll see that as you get into the feeling of it they'll get better and better and you'll get better and better. A friend of mine once asked me how can I be as good as painting of you and I said well if you want to be as good as me you have to paint 3,000 paintings and then start all over again. After that after 3,000 paintings, 
you've become a painter, an artist. And what you do is different than everybody else's. Then makes you a better artist. Don't copy other people's work. Don't listen to other people. Okay, I think that it has the feeling. Oh, I keep doing that. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna stand up. Get this paint off my fingers. I must have a lot of it on the side of the canvas. All right. Where are they? Oh, here they are. I'll show you the painting. I think, can you see the painting now? It looks good. Very, very soft blue sky, like it's almost getting dark. Throw a couple of seagulls in there, this would be beautiful. Maybe I will put a seagull in there too. Let me see if I can get, find one of my little brushes. Here's one. Yeah, good. All right. Okay, two seagulls and a nice, beautiful sky. Female and the male seagull. The World of Art with Paul Creamy. Two seagulls and a beautiful sky. Thank you.